ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Now, here's the Lone Ranger. You'll hear it said that someone was born to the saddle. That means he's a mighty good rider. But remember, like anyone else, he had to learn to ride. He probably took many spills doing it. He's good because he practiced. Rode every time he had a chance. In anything, not just riding. The winners are the fellows who train. Champions are made, not born. I'll agree, Lone Ranger. But is there anything besides practice a person can do to help his training? Absolutely. Eat the right foods. I'd like to pass along something the old pioneers knew. Wheat is one of the best all-around foods you can find for staying power and energy. Today's champions agree with the pioneers about wheat, Lone Ranger. Champions choose Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Champions are made, not born. Get on your way with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. P.T. Barnum's partner, Bailey, walked jauntily through the familiar door that led to the ornate office from which Phineas Taylor Barnum directed the operations of the greatest show on earth. Pausing a moment outside the showman's office, he wrapped the panel door with the head of his cane, then turned the knob. As he entered, Barnum's broad face wrinkled with pleasure. Bailey! Dog gone, you're a sight from sore eyes. How are you, P.T.? First rate, fella. Shake. It's good to be back. Good to have you back. Sit down. Uh, thanks. Well, how was your trip west? Rough. Did you get what you went after? Uh, Custer's guns and swords? Yep. Folks here are so downright interested in Custer's last stand. They'll pay anything for a look at his weapons. Here's the publicity I got ready to roll in the newspapers. This copy's for Greeley's trip. Ah, uh, you'd better hold that copy, P.T. For what? No one will ever see those weapons again. Eh? Huh? They're buried on the bottom of a river somewhere in the Montana hills. But that... I thought the Redskins had them. Chief Sitting Bull threw the blade, the scabbard, and the guns into the water. Why didn't you stop him? Why didn't you tell him we'd pay gold, paper money, or ponies for those weapons? I did my best, P.T. A masked man was with the chief when I reached the camp. He wanted the weapons, too. So he could sell them to the highest bidder, huh? He wanted to send the weapons to West Point. For how much? For free. Uh, no masked outlaw would pass up a chance to make a lot of money. I didn't say he was an outlaw. You don't have to. A man hides his face for only one reason. <laughs> well, what are you grinning about? You're not often wrong, P.T., but you're way off the track where the Lone Ranger's concerned. Uh, who? The masked man's known as the Lone Ranger. That name sounds familiar. Mr. Greeley met him in the West and wrote a couple of articles about him. A lot of high officials in Washington know him. If you heard him talk... If you could see him handle his guns... With contagious enthusiasm, Bailey described the legendary masked rider. As he listened, Barnum tapped the desk top with broad fingertips. When Bailey paused for breath, the great showman snapped... The Lone Ranger's a million-dollar property. You should have put him under contract. What? Think what we could do with that gent on a personal appearance tour. What, Pete? Bailey, I want you to take the first train west. West? Find the Lone Ranger. Sign him to a contract and bring him back here. Not on your life. Why not? I've had all I want of the west. From now on, I stay east of Chicago. What that Lone Ranger? If you want the Lone Ranger, get him yourself. Why, Thunder Bailey, I'll do just that. <laughs> Thank you.
P.T. Barnum packed his bags and left for the West at once. Meanwhile, a killer named Joe Pinto escaped from a southwestern prison where he was scheduled to hang. He eluded the posses that pursued him and drew rain oh, a week later oh, oh, in front of a shack in the hills north of Modoc City. Hey, As he dismounted, a gunslinger named Macon rushed from the ramshackle building to greet him. A bearded man known as Hardtack followed him. Joe, what are you doing here? How'd you get loose? I thought they hung you two days ago. I broke out of prison last Thursday. How are you boys? Downright surprised to see you. Yeah. Come on inside. Right. There's a law on your trail. It'd take a mighty good tracker to follow me. I'd sure hate to have a posse find this hideout. I took a chance coming here. For all I know, you two might have pulled stakes. We figured we'd stay here till after they hung you. I mean, uh, what do you mean, Hartack? Well, the law would like to get us too, Joe, for some of the jobs we pulled with you. The law here doesn't know what either of you look like. Well, if any handbills turn up in town... It's been tough going, Joe. We don't have much cash left. You're breaking my heart. What? Whining because you had to lay low for a couple of months. Well, it hasn't been easy. It was a lot easier than looking forward to the gallows like I was. You can't blame us for that. I blame the Lone Ranger. You wouldn't have been captured if you hadn't tried to pull that stagecoach robbery single-handed. I never saw the masked man, but I saw his engine partner once. I've seen them both. And I'll never forget either one of them. Yeah, let's hope they don't cross your trail again. I hope they do, Macon. What? You want to go back to prison? I did a lot of thinking while I was behind bars. Most of it about that mask, gents. I swore that if I ever got free, I'd square myself with that critter. Well, you'd better forget him. Forget him nothing. I'm going to kill the Lone Ranger. After his startling announcement, Joe Pinto demanded food. His partners explained they hadn't enough supplies to make a meal. We were planning to ride to Modoc City to buy vittles when you came, Joe. Well, then go on to town. I'll wait here for you. All right. Come on, Macon. When they returned to the shack, Macon and Hardtack unloaded the supplies from their saddlebags. Then they showed Joe Pinto the newspaper they bought in Modoc City. Hardtack pointed to a story on the front page and said, There it is, Joe. The whole story of your jailbreak. Now read what it says about posses combing the country for you. Yeah. It's dangerous for you to stay here, Joe. You ought to head for the border while you're still in the clear. <laughs> Hey, thanks for bringing me the paper, boys. Don't sound worried about the news. I'm looking at the box on the bottom of page one. Huh? It's an ad. I didn't notice it. All we read was a story about you. This ad says that a gent named P.T. Barnum wants to see the Lone Ranger on urgent business. What? Right. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of the masked man is to communicate with Mr. Barnum... At the Henry House Hotel in Mordock City. Who's Barnum? I never heard of him. But if you two watch him, he might lead you to the Lone Ranger. Oh, now listen, Joe. You're riding in the town to keep an eye on Barnum. You're in trouble enough without trying to get the Lone Ranger. Hard tax right. Bosses are out looking for you. They don't know where to find me. They might pick up your trail. If they haven't found it by this time, they'll never get it. Dead rat it, Joe. We'll go to jail with you if you're caught here. So, that's what's eating you. You're thinking of your own hide. Well, why not? We don't want to be captured. You boys said you need cash. We do. I have some hidden away. Help me get the Lone Ranger and I'll pay you $5,000 each. Where is your cash? Never mind where it is. I'll pay you when the job's done. That money would come in handy, Hard Tank. Yeah. We could use it to clear out of the country. All right, Joe. We'll help you get the mask, man. Good. Now go into town and keep an eye on Barnum. As soon as he gets a lead on the Lone Ranger, let me know. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. You know, an exciting way to learn about foreign countries is to study their coins. And Wheaties' special foreign coin offer is really terrific. Right now, Wheaties is offering you two different sets of genuine foreign coins. There's the international set with 15 coins from countries like Germany, Iceland, and South Africa. And the mystery set with 15 coins from faraway lands like Angola, Turkey, New Zealand. 
Remember, these coins are real money you could spend right now in these countries. And each coin set comes in a special folder. A map inside shows you where the coins are used and gives information about the country. Each coin has been cleaned and polished. Sounds like these genuine coins would cost a lot, doesn't it? But you can get each set for only 25 cents and one Wheaties box top. Look for directions on the back of Wheaties special foreign coin packages at your grocer's now. Hurry, start your foreign coin collection today. Now to continue. The two outlaws went to Modoc City and made a number of inquiries about P.T. Barnum. As soon as they had a description of him, they went to the Henry house. They saw Barnum heading for the office of the Modoc City News. Macon and Hardtack followed at a discreet distance. They stopped in front of the office window and stared inside. They saw the editor's 14-year-old adopted son, Inky, talking to P.T. Barnum and an Indian. Hardtack studied the Indian for a moment, then exclaimed, Macon, it's the Lone Ranger's pal. Huh? Redskins Todd. Oh, are you sure? Dead sure. If he's in town, the Lone Ranger can't be far away. We'll wait and see where the engine goes when he comes out of there. Yeah. Maybe he'll lead us to the Lone Ranger. I hope so. Inside the office, Inky grinned at Tonto and said, Tonto, I'll bet anything Mr. Barnum's ad brought the Lone Ranger to Modoc City. I figured that ad would get results. You... Name Barnum? Phineas Taylor Barnum's the name, Toto. Mr. Barnum came to town a week and a half ago. He's been running an ad in the paper saying he wanted to get in touch with the Lone Ranger. We not come here because I am paper, Inky. What else would bring you to town? We look for crook named Joe Pinto. Is the masked man in town? A him in camp north of town, Inky. Why don't you take Mr. Barnum to him? Me nothing. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Partner Bailey met you and the Lone Ranger a few weeks ago in Chief Sitting Bull's camp. Me remember, Bailey. When he got back to New York, he told me all about you and the Mash Man. Barnum hey, talked persuasively. Awful. As he listened, Tonto noticed that the Easterner wore no gun belt. Observing the fit of his fashionable coat, the Indian knew Barnum carried no shoulder holster. Deciding that the unarmed showman could be trusted, he agreed to take him to the Lone Ranger. the livery stable, Barnum rented a horse, then rode out of town with Tonto. Get him up to town. Macon and Hardtack followed. Tonto heard the approaching horseman and turned in the saddle. The two outlaws held guns. You're coming. It's all right. Realizing the futility of argument, Tonto and Barnum obeyed. Oh, 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 oh. What's the idea? Keep your hands high, Barnum. If you're after money, you'll yes. take all you got later. I'm the redskin, Macon. Right. Oh, get it. You make big mistake. Try any tricks, my pal will shoot Barnum first, yeah. then he lets you have it. You, you mean you, you'd kill us? You'll die mighty sudden unless you follow orders. Well, I guess we'd better do as they say, Toto. Uh, <clears throat> I've got the engine's guns, Hartek. Good. Come on. Now, Tonto, you're going to lead us to the Lone Ranger. You plenty loco. What do you want with a masked man? That's our business. Me not take you to him. Well, you'll do it or we'll blow Barnum's head off right now. Your life's in your hands. Well, you? wait a minute, gents. Can't we talk this over? Shut up. What about it, Tonto? Well, me lead you to camp. Toto chose the route through the hills carefully, knowing the Lone Ranger would be watching for him to return from town. In the concealed camp, the masked man heard the sound of approaching hoofs. Looking down at the winding trail, he saw Toto and three other riders. The Indians' hands were tied, and so were Barnum's. The two men who followed them held guns. Well, two well-placed shots would have disarmed the gunman, but the Lone Ranger decided to hold his fire until he learned why Toto had been captured. He spoke softly to Silver. Quiet now, boy. Let's go. Come on. The intelligence stallion followed him to the concealment of dense timber. A few moments later, the four men drew rain in the camp. Oh, 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 oh. Tonto studied the tracks on the ground briefly and realized that the Lone Ranger was nearby. Suppressing a grin, he said, uh, Here, camp. 
Where's the masked man? Oh, mm, maybe him ride to town. The engine might be lying, hard tech. Maybe this isn't a camp. I think it is, Macon. See the gear over there? Oh, yeah. Just because you want to find the lone ranger, there's no reason for bringing Tonto and me here at gunpoint. We wouldn't care if we ever found him. Our pal's the one who wants him. What pal are you talking about? Joe Pinto. Uh, that killer? Yeah. He's waiting at the hideout for us. Lone Ranger captured Joe Pinto once. Joe wants to get square with him for that. He's going to kill the masked man. What? Oh, so that's why you want fine camp. Yeah. You want to stay here and wait for the masked man, Hartex? Not for long. You take Barnum and the engine to the shack and hurry back here with Joe. Steady there. <coughs> I'll stay and watch for the Lone Ranger. You can't capture him single-handed. I don't aim to try. If he shows up, I'll stay undercover till you and Joe come back. All right. Come on, get going, engine. Get him up, Barnum. Oh. Get A few minutes after Macon left with his prisoners, Hardtack strode to the place where the Lone Ranger stood earlier watching the trail below. As he rolled a cigarette and considered plans for capturing the masked man, the Lone Ranger stepped from the trees behind him. Rich, what the... Hardtack whirled to face the Lone Ranger. You! You're covered. There's no need to hold a gun on me, mister. I just happened to find your camp. Save it. Huh? I heard you talking to your friend a few minutes ago. What? I was behind those trees when you came here with Tonto and Mr. Barnum. Oh. Keep your hands high and turn your back to me while I take your gun. Uh, all right. I know when I'm late. You're smarter than Joe Pinto. <laughs> I have your gun. What are you going to do now? You know, it would be a lot easier to handle if you're unconscious. So... Oh! The Lone Ranger swung a hard fist to the side of Hardtack's head. Momentarily stunned, the outlaw slumped to the ground. Sorry to do that, but I haven't time to waste. Working quickly, the masked man gagged Hardtack and tied his wrists behind his back. As the outlaw's eyes opened, the lone ranger said, Walk over to that stump. Stand on it to mount your horse. All right. You lead the way to the hideout, and if you try to get away, I'll shoot. I'll move. When Joe Pinto heard riders draw rein outside the shack, he hurried to the door. Here's the masked man's engine, pal, Joe. Where's the Lone Ranger? He wasn't in his camp, but he'd probably go back there. Our tax waiting for him. He wants us to hurry back. We'll stall him. Lou and I get there. The three of us ought to be able to get the masked man. We'll take these two inside, time the chairs, and head for that camp. All right, dismount you two. He's uh, scouting. <laughs> Who's this gent? He's Barnum. He was with the Redskin when we captured him. Take a look at the jewelry he's wearing, Joe. Yeah, it's worth plenty. How much cash does he have? Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out when we get him inside. Walk to the shack, Barnum. You too, Tano. Uh huh. If I'd known I'd run into this kind of trouble, I'd never have come looking for the Lone Ranger. You've cut yourself in on a mighty bad deal. That's no news. Why are you looking for the Lone Ranger? I wanted to sign him up for a personal appearance tour in the East. <laughs> You'll never see the East again. I've planned for a long time to kill the masked man in Tano. Now I'll have to kill you, it... too. Why, well, you murder rat? Come on, Joe. Hard tax waiting for us. We're going to get the Lone Ranger. we better head for his camp pronto. You're not going anywhere. Huh? I've come to get you two. Joe Pinto and Macon turned to the door. The masked man. I'll kill you, mister. As the two outlaws reached for their weapons, the Lone Ranger's Colts roared. No! no Macon no. staggered back under the impact of a bullet in the shoulder. A second bullet smashed Joe Pinto's weapon before it cleared the holster. Oh, my shoulder. Macon had had enough. As he clung to the table and sobbed with fright, Joe Pinto snatched a knife from his belt and lunged toward the masked man. No! A silver bullet shattered the blade of the knife. They can do something. Get this masked man. Oh, I'm hurt. Shot me. I've had enough. You're piled out of the fight, Joe. No. You have no weapon. I'll kill you with my hands. The half-crazed killer charged again. I take it. Oh. The Lone Ranger oh. met the attack with a blow that landed on Joe's chin. The outlaw stopped in his tracks and slumped to the floor. Yeah, you got him. Other crook. Half out, Kimasabi. Maybe he's dead. My bullet hit him in the shoulder. Me think I'm faint. I'll cut your ropes and we'll examine their wounds. Uh. Uh, where'd you come from, Kimasabi? I followed you here. There, you're free, Toto. Now, I'll cut the rope on your wrist, sir. Yes, please. There. Uh, thank you. Now, where, Silver? A short distance from the shack. I thought I'd make less noise if I came here on foot. What happened to Hardtack? He's tied to a tree, Tonto. 
We'll pick him up on our way to town with these two. Mister, my name is Barnum. Glad to know you, Mr. Barnum. It's a real pleasure to meet the owner of the greatest show on earth. The show you just put on beats anything I could do. You're all Bailey said you were and more. Joe Pinto, plan kill you, Kimasabi. Yes, I know, Toto. What are you going to do with him, mister? Turn him and his friends over to Marshal Jim Fraser in Modoc City. The marshal will see that Joe reaches territorial prison. Good. You see, he has an overdue appointment with the hangman. The Lone Ranger, Toto, and P.T. Barnum took the prisoners to Modoc City, where Marshal Jim Fraser jailed them all. Before leaving the lawman's office, the New York showman spoke to the masked man for some time. Then he said goodbye and headed for the Henry house. As he passed the newspaper office, Inky hailed him. Hey there, Mr. Barnum. Oh, oh hello, Inky. I heard all about the capture of those crooks. News travels fast in this town. Just as fast as it does in New York. Uh, Where are you going now, Mr. Barnum? Back to the Henry house to pack my bags, Inky. Did you talk to the masked man about the proposition you had in mind? I did. What did he say? He said he hoped to see me again, but... They didn't have any plans for going east right now. Oh. You know, Inky, after today's experience, I've decided my partner Bailey was right. About what, Mr. Barnum? From now on, the two of us will stay east of Chicago and leave the west to the Lone Ranger. Turn in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, The Quiet Highwayman. Pilot Pete can fly a jet. He's 12 years old and the fastest yet. He can loop the loop because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. (laughs) He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Everybody loves Cheerios. So delicious, because it's made from toasted oats, all ready to eat with milk. And the go power it gives you. You see, each spoonful of Cheerios and milk is packed with vitamins, proteins, and minerals. The very things your body needs for healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is real muscle-building food. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. When the Lone Ranger searched for the gang led by the quiet highwayman, he little suspected the identity of the man who had decided to add Tonto and Dan Reed to his list of victims. This is an exciting adventure, packed with action and suspense. Be sure to listen. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.